Hello, friends, and welcome once again to Transformational Astrology. I'm Henry Seltzer, and we sure are seeing the transformational times that have come up uh, recently with this horrible attack on Ukraine um, by Russian forces. Um, unclear uh, what the motivation is except to conquer and add to territory. Um, I don't know if that's a political statement, but most of the world, the Western world, um, agrees with that, that Russia has no business attacking Ukraine, and we just hope that somehow things will get resolved there. It, it's very difficult um, for everybody watching what's going on and wondering why uh, that's happening and what the end result is likely to be. Uh, so we pray that that will change for the better, and it can't come too soon. So that having been said, we do have quite an interesting March cycle that we're in the midst of here with this now the full moon of the 18th, which is Friday, coming right up. Um, it's early morning on the, on the west coast of Friday. Uh, let me uh, just go ahead and start to show you the chart. So I want to show you that chart and the chart of the new moon as well. So let's go over there and uh, see. So here's the full moon chart coming up, as I say, on the 18th, and with the moon at 27 degrees of Pisces, exactly across, obviously, with the full moon from uh, the moon in Virgo. And we can see also that because of this 27 degree mark, uh, that does hit Pluto at 28 degrees, a sextile, and it also hits this new planet, Haumea, at 29, which is a close square with Pluto, which is very interesting. You know, this is also uh, opposite to Eris, Eris at 24, so roughly opposite, uh, not close. And this uh, T-square between uh, Eris and opposite to Haumea and square to Pluto, we've been seeing as a harbinger of difficult times, including last summer of 2021, when that was pretty strong. And to me, it indicated that we were in for kind of a tough summer. And now we have it re reoccurring in a different way because uh, it is a very close square with Pluto having moved past where it was before 24, 25 degrees of Capricorn, now at 28. But now it's a very close square with the Haumea element itself. And we note also that uh, Maki Maki, which is the other of these new planets that have to do with nature connection, they have to do with really connecting to our inner moral compass, which is an aspect of natural law, perennial wisdom, coming through indigenous cultures. Also, the connection to nature and the connection to right action and right relationship. We see that in many Western uh, modern figures, um, including environmentalists, including people that just have an activist agenda and want to see things change for the better, that really do observe uh, their inner uh, guidance on, on what is the right thing, what is the right thing to do, what, telling the truth, for example, which is another thing that's come up big time in these, in these uh, 20, 22, uh, 2021, 2022 20, days. You know, this, this 20th century, especially this decade of the 20th century, has been <clears throat> really a big, a big uh, challenge to uh, truth versus, uh, uh, you could say, almost propagandist um, claims of, of uh, being accurate, which, which can be shown to be uh, just for the self-serving purposes. <clears throat> it's happening in Russia. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's happening in Russia right now. So uh, let's take a look, though, at the cycle, the whole cycle of this uh, lunation uh, in Pisces, which starts with the new moon of March 2nd. And that was a really rather radical configuration. So the, that new moon was at 12 degrees of Pisces, very close to Jupiter, by the way, which co-rules Pisces. So very strong Jupiter uh, new moon, but that's not all that's going on. Look at this 27 degree mark, and you could see that Venus at 26 degrees 59 minutes is really part of that. Uh, so a partile triple conjunction of Mars, Venus, and Pluto at 27 degrees, again, uh, this really, uh, because it's Pluto like we were saying, it is part of that square between Pluto <clears throat> and Haumea, so it's really very much part of this entire um, month of, of March, you know, this entire lunation cycle beginning with the Pisces new moon of March 2nd. And we can also note 
that there is a very close connection between the moon, sun and moon, and this triple conjunction, namely, that is a perfect semi-square within about a degree. As you can see in the Time Passages software, you can put, I'm showing the moon here, semi-square 0.3 degrees with Mars. It would be the sun also, of course, because the sun and moon are together. So um, that's a very uh, tight triple, config, triple conjunction, uh, which brings it out very strongly. And also means that it affects us in our terms of our relationships, in terms of the way we do our assertion and make things happen, in terms of potential anger, in terms of, you could even say, war, in terms of violence, uh, indicated by not only the Pluto and the Mars together with Venus, but also the fact that this new moon at 12 degrees is very close uh, sextile also to the position of Uranus here at 11 degrees of Taurus. So that is another strong indication. We have both Pluto and we have Uranus. And what does that remind you of? The 60s when Pluto and Uranus were exactly conjunct for that period of time. Uh, the period of time that R Richard Tarnas um, calls uh, a period of 1960 to 1972 by his calculations, his methods, which uses a 15 degree orb because he says that's when the world transit is really affecting everybody, um, you know, in a, in a fairly profound way. So um, <clears throat> this is some, some work that's being done outside the door here. So I uh, would like to uh, go into this uh, new moon chart a little bit more because I think it is quite characteristic and quite interesting compared to world events and compared to our own internal transformation that we're in the midst of, what we're trying to achieve with our own lives and trying to see the way through, see how uh, we can help, see how we are all affected by what's going on. So uh, not only is Uranus involved in this new moon, but also uh, Chiron is very closely involved as well, both by the semi-sextile between the new moon and Chiron, and also by the fact that uh, there's a quintile between the 27 degree mark of Pluto, Mars, and, and Venus to Chiron. So this is a um, very strong Chiron as well, and Chiron is opposite to Makimaki, Maki, which has to do with activism, which has to do with um, finding our own purpose, our own internal purpose. So, so is Eris, by the way. Eris goes to depth also and is all about finding our truth, finding what we, our bottom line is, what we cannot not do, and acting upon that. So all of these new planets are part of this whole configuration, uh, the square between uh, the position of Eris at 23, 24 degrees of Aries and this 27 degree mark that Pluto has reached, which is also, by the way, <laughs> The, the degree mark of U.S. Pluto, which brings our own uh, na national consciousness into this whole picture as well, because we are realize, realizing that the world, you know, the national uh, consequences of our actions as well upon the world, and how that um, we have to do <laughs> we have to do what's right if we're going to preach, if we're going to have a moral high ground about do not uh, attack a neighboring country to attempt to uh, take their territory, do not make an unprovoked attack and violate international law. That's something that we have to recognize as an important truth for everybody to observe, including ourselves. So I think the fact that uh, Pluto is right on the Pluto of the US chart is very interesting. The fact that Pluto and Uranus are both very strong in this uh, new moon configuration for March 2nd is very interesting. It does speak to the evolution that we're seeing in terms of our society, because we're trying to find a way, are we not, to be uh, morally uh, integrous, to be telling the truth, rather than telling falsehoods that serve our purpose, and to be as countries or as individuals, and also to be uh, aware that we are all connected, that you know, we are all one people, that uh, if something happens to some other human, it's happening to us. Also, the, the creatures of the world, which is, you know, the other creatures of the planet, which is what Haumea is all about, is this connection to nature. And re recognizing that also the species and the individual animals, the individual plants and animals, are all part of our own life and our own system. You know, it says in the Tao Te Ching, it says, if there is uh, the recognition that all men are part of my own body, then we realize that there's no way that something happens to somebody else without happening to ourselves. So that's an important realization, I think, for these times.
So uh, this is a very strong new moon configuration. A lot of astrologers have been talking about it. You know, this triple conjunction is dramatic. Uh, Mercury with Saturn is dramatic. That's a very close within, as you can see, only a few minutes of a degree, even though they're in a separate degree of the zodiac. That's one is 59 and one is 03 of the 19 degree mark. So uh, we have a very strong um, position here where we're kind of our thoughts are in a serious mode. We're thinking about the consequences. We're thinking about limitation. We're thinking about how we have to um, try to act uh, with integrity. And that includes how the society is going to go forward. That's all part of Saturn. And then um, the fact that we have Chiron, the wounded healer, emphasized, you know, there is a painful situation we're in the midst of now, both culturally and individually, we can feel that pain. And we can feel the pain of our own internal recognition that we have to make to move forward as an integrous way with our own uh, activities and to recognize that we have to be complete, that we have to also include our inner world. Our, you know, this is also the 12th house of the chart, naturally, with the Pisces sign. There's a, there's a stellium of planets there. We have to re recognize what's under the covers of our own, of each of our own individual consciousness and bring that forward, make an integration, as Jung recommended, in his concept of individuation to, to make a, uh, an, uh, an integration with what is underneath everything below the level of conscious understanding, tr strive to understand what those things are. When we get angry, for example, as Mars might indicate, where does that anger come from? Well, it comes from what's inside us. And recognizing that instead of the very common phrase, you make me so angry. Well, there, you don't, nobody makes you do anything. It's your anger that's coming up in response to a particular situation. So we have to keep that in mind as well. So let's go back to the full moon and see what else we can glean. Now we do note that this 27 degree mark does match the original 27 degree mark that Pluto was at just a couple of weeks ago. And it does uh, enhance or you know touch on the square between Pluto and Haumea indicating there is this really strong message right now that we have to transform in the way that we see ourselves at a deep level corresponding to the principles of natural law and to connection with each other. That's a very important thing for us all to recognize and that's what's in transformation right now. That is the world's response. And remember that there was a lot of Jupiter in that new moon. It was two degrees away, Jupiter and Pisces. Jupiter now has moved a little beyond that. But uh, the point being that in this lunation cycle that began two weeks ago, there is strong Jupiter, so there is some cause for optimism. And of course, the optimism in the situation in Ukraine is that they have been, the Ukrainian people have been so much more resilient than anybody ever thought, and they are talking about possibly finding a diplomatic solution. They've been able to stop the Russian advance on their cities, even though they've suffered a lot of casualties from the bombing. So, you know, there's some optimism that we can maybe, and the fact that there, there's unanimity amongst the Western nations in rejecting that behavior and saying, no, you can't invade another country for their resources and to take the country over as part of your territory. You just can't do that. It's not kosher. Not okay. We do still have, of course, the strong Uranus position, which was um, emphasized in that new moon and now is also a factor um, in uh, the fact that uh, the, this Jupiter, I'm sorry, this Mars-Venus conjunction has moved on into Aquarius now and does occupy a position where that is a strong square, especially Venus, to the Uranus position. So we still have strong Uranus, which is unexpected events. We don't know what's happening next. It's also intuition. Tapping into our intuition is very important right now and seeing the bigger picture. You know, trying to see as we did in the 60s, trying to see our way forward into a different world order where kindness can prevail. That was true in the 60s, and it's true in this timing of the opening square that we're seeing now, the ramifications of all the opening square that was exact back in 2013, 2015, between Pluto and, Ju and uh, Uranus, as Pluto and Uranus, their original conjunction from the 60s, opens up into the first square between them as Uranus, of course, faster moves on to make a 90 degree aspect to the position of Pluto. And we are seeing as well, might as well mention, um, there's a very strong square between Saturn 
and Uranus, which was characteristic of last year, especially 2021, it will be coming back on November 8th of this year. So that's important to remember. That's a very strong uh, eclipse, uh, lunar eclipse on November 8th, which I talked about when I talked about the year ahead, but it's worth mentioning again. There will be that very close square at that time with only a two degree gap between the Uranus position at 16 degrees at that point of, of Taurus, and it's actually part of the eclipse. That's where the Sun and Moon are opposite at 16 degrees of Taurus and Scorpio. So that's the Scorpio Sun, November 8th of this year, which also happens to be Election Day. So that's, again, this strong contrast between conservative values, you know, not moving ahead with new ideas, and the Iranian impulse to move forward. And the, coupling that with also the Pluto Uranus, which is happening in the background, which is trying to see if we can forge a new way of, of being in the world, a new way of, of moving forward as a culture. So all of that is the background. And let's transition back to this other situation here in the, uh, whoops, didn't mean to do that. And uh, just want to close with, uh, you know, a notion of optimism, a notion that um, how do we solve the world's problems? Well, guess who it's up to? It's up to you. It's up to each one of us to vote uh, with our vote <laughs> in, in uh, the actual election to vote with our, our money and our economic behavior, to vote with our attitude and what we say to each other, to vote with our actions, to uh, be on the side that we feel deep inside of ourselves is the right place to be, the right thing to do. Act with integrity at all minute, all moments, and you're really, you're doing a tremendous amount of work there and you're really on the right track. So don't feel powerless, don't feel like there's things going on in the world that we can't affect because the power of public opinion is still very strong. And that's one thing that's happening to change the behavior of Russia right now because Russian public opinion is shifting against the war slowly. And that's what's happening in this country too because we all have a chance to really vote for what we believe is the right way to do, to be equitable, to, to treat people fairly, to have do something about the income inequality which has gotten very extreme, and to try to correct the situation that leads to vast uh, climate change, you know, to, there's a really uh, difficult problem facing the world right now and it's the fossil fuels and the climate change. So we really have to start working on these things and we can all work on them together because individually the drops of water add up to the mighty ocean and individually we each make a difference. So I'll leave that thought with you as we end this uh, month's uh, lunation, so this other major lunation on Friday with the, the March 18th full moon. Something to think about and to try to do the best we can. After all, that's all we can do is the best we can. So take care, friends. Good luck with everything. Talk soon. Bye now.